And then it's time for the main event. Wendy Chu versus Tiffany Stratton in a lights out match. They forgot that part about the lights out match where you turn the lights off and then turn them back on. They did in they fact left them off. Dim the lights and left it half lit for the entire match. And it's not like it was pitch black. It's not like you couldn't see what was happening. But you couldn't see it very well. It was just dumb. <laughs> it was this seriously, did Vince Russo book this? <laughs> No, they they thought it would be funny. You know, Tiffany Stratton's always sleeping. We'll actually turn the lights out for the lights out match. We'll use Legos. We'll I'll do... blindfold the fans match. Yeah, we'll do this and that. And I mean, I thought the actual match itself, I thought they did a good job. And I thought the finish was actually very good the way that they set it all up. But uh, the lights kind of killed the whole thing for me. I thought this whole thing was very much like watching an old ECW fan cam match. Because in the mid to late 90s, ECW, they, they had fans with camcorders in the crowd. I don't know, it may have been probably not, not legit fans, but they would put these things on TV. And so you couldn't really see what was going on because it shot in a camcorder from the eighth row. But you'd see what you could see, and it was ECW. And a lot of times ECW is silly, and there'd be dance contests mid-match or pose downs or just repeated nut, shot to the nuts and a lot of straight comedy. And then you see one guy ripping a guy's head off with barbed wire or whatever. This was like that. You couldn't see half of what was going on. Most of what you could see was comedy. And there was also moments of extreme violence, like falling on Legos and uh, going through the bed frame, not the actual bed or the table with the bed, and all sorts of weapons and chairs and rackets and powder. And Wendy eventually chokeslams her through the bed and throws her in the ring, hits a reverse splash, and pinned her. It's actually better because uh, Tiffany went for her powder. But the powder got kicked into her own face. And everyone popped for that because they always pop for powder. And then they do the big pop for that. Then she gets uh, slammed through the bed, which is your table spot. They went nuts for that. And then she got thrown in the ring and hit with the move and pinned. And you know what? I mean, you know, I think Tiffany Stratton's going to end up on the main roster probably fairly soon. Uh, hopefully not too soon, but, I mean, she's going to make it. And... Uh, Despite that, this was a feud where she had harassed and bothered and et cetera to Wendy Chu. And the babyface got their win in the end in uh, their speciality, a match in the fucking dark because she sleeps all the time. And uh, I was totally fine with the finish, the match. Uh, You know what? I will say this, though. If the options are we're going to have the lights on and we're going to do 644 camera cuts in an eight-minute match. Hmm. Or the lights are out, and because you can't see so much, we won't cut it as much. I'll go with the lights out matches. Yeah, turn the lights off. For yep. all shows. Much better, much yes, better. I would prefer that. But that was the uh, that was the show. I thought it was good. Yeah, the show was getting better. And it ended with a double contract signing. The women, uh, Miko, Mandy, and Blair signed their contracts, and then Braun and Tyler signed their contracts. There you go. That's all that has to happen. A fine two nights of wrestling action, everybody. A lot of fun, a lot of weirdness. There was definitely a lot of weirdness. You know, Tom, it was abundantly clear this week that I just don't get enough respect. Excuse me? I feel I deserve a little bit of credit for your your recent success. You want to take credit for my victory in the G1 Climax? You can fuck off. Why don't you put your money where your little mouth is and get in the ring with me? No. If If you really want to take credit for this shit. There's a tweet from August 3rd. Who wants to make it happen? I'll team with Debbie Malenko. Why don't you call up Billy Starks and why don't you step in the ring against me and her, huh? I'll text yeah, her right. right now. I'll be in Chicago all out weekend. How about that? I'll call up Mikey. The black label? Yeah. Debbie, are you available all out? weekend look at those arms brian's not even in ring shape for this show me yours tom huh look at this go back and forth huh go back jared put yours up go back 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 oh yeah who's not in ring shape now motherfucker she can't do it she can't do it she can't do it this is like when we grappled brian and you clearly tapped oh fuck off what a dick oh so now now you're getting fired up well, Fuck, dude. You know, we can settle God. this. You know, we can settle this. You meet me in Chicago. Buddy. I'm I'm in. You've agreed. Yeah, I've agreed because you don't have Basically. a fucking partner. I will beat dude. your ass silly. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. I'm texting him right now. Mikey, by the way, okay. Yes, all caps. I'm not the only killer that you're going to be in there with, Brian. Killer Kelly. See you in Chicago. Although I, I was just alerted that the show is at 11 o'clock p.m., so I, I may have to pull out. That's past my bedtime. So if you go on the all-out weekend, Black Label Pro, Friday, September 2nd. I can't wait to beat your ass. Not going to happen. It's been years in the making.